Thinking about the character Zuri and kind of the beginning of it, I feel like we all have had that moment where you want to take it on yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to do your hair, yeah. and it's exhausting. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think that's the beauty of the project. It's like, you know, Zuri obviously has been instilled since she, she was a baby that her hair is beautiful. You know, her mom is a natural hair blogger, and um, it's like the one thing that she can't do. You know, she's like that young person that's been here before, and, the, you know, she finally needs to enlist her dad's help for this special moment because she wants to give a gift to her mom, you know, in that last scene of the film. He was sweating, too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, hey, it's, it's, it's hard work. Even when you're watching the tutorial, you got to pause it sometimes <laughs> right. and run it back and <laughs> all kind of stuff. I want to know, because I think we've talked a lot about how personal this yeah. is, mm -hmm. and it's a no-brainer, yeah. and of course we should talk about yeah. this and build content around this. But what have you learned that you didn't know, maybe you didn't know I mean, in I the think process of... Yeah, I mean, I think just going into every project with intention, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have to think of, like, the best case scenario. Like, you know, for us, it really was to inspire and hope to try to change the conversation around black hair and uh, have something that young people could relate to and see themselves in. You know, so often in the 100-year history of film, you know, we've only had, back when we did the Kickstarter, there were only three movies that uh, starred black protagonists. It was Bebe's Kids, it was Princess and the Frog, and it was Home from DreamWorks. And so, you know, when you grow up and you're young and you, you know, people want to be a Disney princess, but it wasn't until Princess and the Frog that they actually had one that looked like them. And you can imagine what that does to your confidence. And so, you know, we just, we're just trying to represent and hopefully young kids see themselves even more now. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the experience of braiding a child's hair, do you mm -hmm. think that's considered an expression of love yeah. in our community? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like she was saying, Zuri can't do her own hair, but like a lot of us can't do our own hair. I can't right. braid my hair. And so it's a communal experience. Yeah. You're sharing with somebody for eight hours. You know, you're getting to know the person, and it's really a very personal mm -hmm. thing. And I, I think, you know, for somebody to do that, anybody to do it, even if they're getting paid, it's, it's an expression of love, you yeah. know? Yeah, I agree. Sure. And I like that you mentioned eight hours because it's not a slick back and go no, situation. No, no. No matter how you wear no. your hair. <laughs> Same for guys too. Right. <laughs> you brought up the child in Houston, yeah. DeAndre Arnold. You yeah. brought him up and you brought up his dreads. And did, did that feel personal to you? It, it, seeing that story. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. You know, um, when we did uh, the Kickstarter initially, you know, the dad, you know, he looked a little safer. You know, he's like looked like he may have been like four, mid forties. You know, kind of a, a safer type figure. And then, um, you know, when we met Karen, she had the great idea to let's make him look younger. You know, let's give him an arm sleeve tattoo. Like, let's have him represent um, this 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 negative stereo. Not, not you not represent the stereotype, but you know, people have a certain perception about young black men mm -hmm. when they see them on the street. You know, they want to clutch the purse, lock the door, cross, you know, whatever. And for us, it was like if we could showcase a young father that looked like this, but also was a loving dad, it'll may, maybe make you think twice when you see the next black man on the street that has his tattoos and has locks. Yeah. So much wrapped mm -hmm. in this, yeah. wrapped up in Absolutely. this seven minute yeah. mm -hmm. short, right? Mm -hmm. Was it intentional that her mom be dark skin? Yeah. Was Very, that? that was extremely important to me. Um, yeah, you know, just again, just I think as filmmakers, we have so much control over the narrative of the images that we put out into the world. And so for so often um, that you know, a dark skin, you know, woman, love interest hasn't been put to the forefront. And it was extremely important for me for that to be the case in this because, um, you know, just especially in animation, you know, we're not, sometimes even the nuances, we're not able to have those conversations. And so to do that in animation, it was really important. Great. Yeah. I don't want to give it away because right. if you haven't, first of all, if you haven't <laughs> seen the short, you're crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's a moment at the end yeah. when we talk about, and I think we're talking about hair and yeah. what's beautiful mm -hmm. and without giving it away, tell me the intention behind kind of the surprise at the end. Yeah, you know, I mean, to me it was just all about showing that regardless of how your hair is, mm -hmm. you know, you're still beautiful. Yeah. You know, um, we're not trying to say, you know, you should wear it all natural or straight or, or curly or whatever. You know, it's just like love yourself where you're at. You know, and at the end of our film, you know, the the you know the main character, she's kind of dealing with a situation with her hair, and she's like lost a little bit of her self confidence. And you know, I think the whole act of Zuri making her father do her hair was to kind of prove how much he loved her mom. And you know, just I, I think it just represented all of that. Yeah, it's great. 
think we have an audience question now. Uh -huh. What is your name and what's your question? Hi, uh -huh. um, I'm Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Uh -huh. And I really wanted to know, I was, the character's name is Zuri, right? Yeah. I was Zuri, except I was 21 <laughs> going through, oh my God, I need to figure out how to do my hair. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. My parents also didn't know anything right. about it. We were doing relaxers. Mm -hmm. It was so... Uh, I'm scared to right. let you have your natural hair because sure. the perception of it, of course. But you both have your locks. Yep. You look gorgeous. <laughs> I wanted to know, um, did you go on a hair journey like oh, yeah. that, right. like me? Oh, yeah. And how did you show specifics of the hair journey? Because mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just now, I'm 29, and mm -hmm. it took me 10 years yeah. to work myself up to wearing this fro. Yeah. I'm proud of it now, but yeah. it took a whole journey. And it looks beautiful. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's always a journey. I mean, for me, I grew up in Texas. I was in a community where I, there weren't mm -hmm. a lot of me around. So it was really, again, it's about self-love and the hair is just an expression of that. And so we were pressing and relaxing and doing all that stuff for many years. And um, it wasn't until I left home and I went to New York and I saw other women wearing their hair natural, mm -hmm. I was like, wait, can I do this? And it was, <laughs> you know, trying this, trying that, getting scared, getting back, you know. And then when I finally just let go and I didn't ever go back, I just, yeah. um, it was really, it was liberating, you know. Yeah. And every once in a while, you know, because I work in a corporate environment, but I work in animation, so I'm around a lot of artists. They would, you know, give me, you know, like, oh, is it okay for you to, not in the, not in my community, but other women, and other black women asking whether it was okay for me to wear my hair natural in the corporate environment. You gave them but, permission to but think But yeah, about they get, yeah, it. and, but no one, you know, and, and luckily, and this is, I know this is not the case. There's a lot of corporate environments where you do get police, so I was just, I was lucky to be in an environment where I could really do it, but, uh, yeah. you know, and then there's moments where I, I'm like, oh, I'm going to a wedding. I guess I need to look a certain way, and I'd press out my hair, and I was at a wedding outside, and mm -hmm. the wind was like, oh, no, you don't, and my hair just snapped right <laughs> back to <laughs> being a fro, and I was like, okay, that's telling me something, that my hair wants to do a certain thing, and I yeah. just let it go, but I, I get it. It was years for me to kind of really get to that place you know yeah. yeah yeah and you know I guess to answer your second question um, in terms of wanting to show that journey in the film um, you know for us it was really important just to kind of show the characters kind of already at that place where they love their hair um, right. you know I think if we especially the time was so tight with the six minute piece to be able to show you, you got to be very specific with what you want to show but you know it's our hope that you know, moving forward that, you know, people are able to love their hair kind of when they are five years old, like Zuri is in the short and film. No and, and it's no they big deal. And it's no big deal. They don't have to fight through exactly. psychological issues to exactly. get to that point. Right. So exactly. Thank you no, so thank much. thank you. Thank you for a great thank question. You. Can we go back to your hair transition a little bit? And sure. you talked about how it was liberating. Yeah. But was there anxiety about the workplace for um, a bit? Did that hold you back for a while? Or? You know, again, I think I was really lucky because I was in sort of a freelance kind of art kind of community where it was OK. Um, I think it was more about my self um, love of like, OK, knowing that this was beautiful, but just having to really kind of claim it as my own. So it was really, for me, just a much more internal, personal journey of like, I'm never going back. I don't need to kind of look, you know, a certain way, even though that was kind of how I was raised. Um, you know, so then, you know, you finally, also, you get old enough, you're like, I'm not looking back, <laughs> you know, but I, don't, but I don't, you know, to Matthew's point, I don't want people to have to go through this journey. They should be two years old or one years old and just really look in the mirror and see the beauty mm -hmm. that they are, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think about that all the time. I wear my hair straight. I have a relaxer, which mm -hmm. is the worst thing you can ever do to your head. Mm -hmm. And I wear right. extensions. And I, and I think I like my hair. I wear my hair right. in a way that I right. like it. But I wonder why I like it like this. And I, you'll, I'll never right. know. It's too, it's, too, mm -hmm. um, it's too late at this point. But I wonder if I had messaging like this, yeah. would what I actually like deep down okay. be different? Right. It's, it's probably. Deep. No, it's, 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 so, it's so deep, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just like when you're un inundated with images every single day, you watch every commercial you watch, it, that's the standard of beauty. Every billboard you see, every magazine, you know, every show, the protagonist, the love interest, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it can really do a number on you, you know what I mean? And you don't I even think, know what's happening. And you don't even yeah. know what's happening. You don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's not great. It's great that we're doing what we can to try and break no, that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, you know, I think it's, it's a great time, you know, especially in film, you know, there's so many more opportunities, I think, for us to get our stories out there. And I think uh, there's so many great people who are taking pride. You know, we had Issa Rae in our short film, and she's such a beacon and an example of an actress who is like, you know, forget it. Like, I'm gonna just rock my hair the way I wanna wear it, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna, you know, subscribe to whatever your standard is, and she just does her. And I think that inspires a lot of people to kind of do them as well. Yeah.
I feel so seen often mm -hmm. when Issa Rae does something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, wait, it's not just me? Yeah. yeah and yeah. sometimes that's all you need. You just need to see that one person that, you know, is walking in that confidence to give you the motivation to do it too. And also sometimes the journey's not easy and it's okay. When, I love when people share the vulnerability yeah. or the journeys and the triumphs and, and the failures that they had kind of getting to that place because I think it really gives people confidence yeah. to kind of follow their steps. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 All right, upcoming projects. What, do we, what should we look out for? What's next? Ooh. Mm, well, winning an Oscar. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say, you know, Matthew is amazing because the intent he had about wanting to be Oscar worthy from the very beginning was really powerful. And so we've been had a great had a great time working together, and I'm just mm -hmm. looking forward to finding more projects for yeah. him and for us to work together. Yeah, yeah, no, same. You know, Karen is amazing, I and mean, I think uh, again, I, I just love everything, everything that she represents because I think so often we talk about, okay, why are the Oscars? Why is why is the inclusion not where it needs to be this particular year? And you know, it's because we don't have people like Karen who saw the value in the project. You know what I mean? And if we only have four or five or six films that come out every year compared to the thousands that hit theaters everywhere, um, you know, just we're already going to be fighting an uphill battle. But we, the more people that we have, like Karen, who are executives that can greenlight our projects, the better. And in terms of me, um, you know, directing uh, more stuff. I did an episode of Blackish that's uh, coming out um, in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, yeah. We're just just kind of trying to continue working and continue telling our stories. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I look forward to more <laughs> stories. Thank you.